So what we have started doing here is uh, linearization. Uh, so the theorem behind it is here. Uh, so once again, replacing uh, curve things with, with straight lines. That's, that's what we have been talking about, the straight line being the tangent line. Uh, so as long as you stay close to that point, the, uh, you are good. And that is the, uh, once again, <clears throat> well, if you're doing, say, reflection, solving the problem about reflections, then you, that's what you do. You replace the, the curve with, the, with its, its tangent line, even though probably you could just, just as well do uh, the, the second lines, right? So, so it's not like you want to do a computation. So if you, you are doing a numerical analysis of, of your problem and you're talking about some kind of reflection, then going like, by, like this, the second lines is actually the way to go because you don't really know what the tangent line is. You don't want to carry out computations because that would limit your your, your um, applicability of your results. So you actually sample your curve and then connect by straight edges and that and then things will be reflecting off of that like this. Okay? Um, so that is the, uh, uh, the, um, the background. That's why things kind of work. But uh, the problem we are solving is, is, is different. This one is actually numerical. Um, approximating things um, uh, uh, that we cannot compute by hand, okay? So, uh, so um, which means that it is all also is applicable to what computers do. Because the square root, computer does not know what the square root is to begin with. Okay, so it's, uh, it's uh, uh, all we know, what is, uh, what is the meaning of this? It is some x such that x squared is equal to 4.01. That is the only meaning of, of, the, of the square root that, that there is. So the square root is the inverse function of, of the square. Does the calculator literally just make it to the one-half power and then... Well, but the, the, that's the problem. It doesn't know what... The, it, it, you'd have to explain to it what the one-half power is. And how do you do it? If you yourself are unable to do that computation, that look at it, that's what you're supposed to do. What, what is square root of 4.01? I don't know. Uh, considering that the number will happen to be many decimals. And there is no algebraic procedure for computing it exactly. I mean, multiply, uh, division, I'm sorry, addition, subtraction, and uh, some most multiplication is okay, can be done by hand. Okay, so if you start with, uh, say, two integers, you can add them. And, and so can computer. It's, it's very straightforward, okay? Uh, if you're doing multiplication, also can be done. If you don't, you don't have to infinite many decimals, you just multiply them. Division already is questionable. You divide, divide one by three and you have infinitely many threes there. Okay, so that, we, and then you already, it, it already instantly becomes approximation. One third is 0.333. So all you have two numbers, integers one and three, and you're supposed to compute it, and there is no absolute, absolute accurate way to do it, which means that you arrive to approximations. So even division creates approximation. Now imagine what the square root does. Uh, you cannot just ask uh, uh, the computer, go solve the problem, uh, solve the equation, x squared is equal to 4.01. Uh, you can certainly do trial and error, but that's very, very in in inefficient. So the answer is uh, the answer is to approximate the function. They approximate it almost in the either like the one on the left or the, the way it is done, done on the right. So this is number one and number two. Either you use the tangent lines, which is the way we're going to do it, or you use secant lines. Either way, either way, uh, you uh, you you you're going to do be do doing approximations. Um, uh, the point being is that uh, you can you you have to pre-compute some of the uh, some of the square roots, and you could. So pre-compute, say square root of four, that's, that's is equal to there. There, we already have a starting point. Starting point, uh, square root of one is equal to one, square root of nine is equal to three. So you can pre-compute a few of, of, of the values of the square root, and they, they serve, serve like anchors. And from the, those anchors, if you step off, uh, you know roughly uh, where you are. Okay, so uh, this is what I mean. Uh, is uh, well, the, this is the answer actually. Uh, well, the, this is the simplest, the simplest way to approximate. Square root of four point zero one is approximately equal to two. 
because four is uh, very uh, four point oh one is very close to four, so well, and the square root of, 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 of four is two, so there. Um, or the square root of four point oh two, it's still two. Square root of four point two, it's still two. Okay, so so as long as you don't uh, for for a bunch of numbers that as long as you don't step too far away from uh, from four, the answer will be two. At least at the simplest at the simplest level. So this is what I'm talking about. Uh, if I now look at the the whole graph, which by the way looks like this, y equals square root of x. This is an unknown unknown graph. So certainly we we have only general idea what it looks like, and the uh, calculator doesn't ha doesn't have a clue. So this is what uh, what I do is I so I picked uh, I I can have a few I do know a few points on the graph. I know this one square root of 0 is 0, uh, then square root of 1 is 1, okay, square root of 4 is 2. Okay, so I have three points. I also can have, if I go three here, then uh, here somewhere I will have nine. Okay, so one more point. Uh, I, have, I have these points. And then, and then now, you see what just has happened, this one over here. I am approximating different numbers. Uh, but as long as they as long as they stay around four, the the answer is always two. Which means what does does that mean? It means that within a certain distance from four, the answer is always the same. The function is constant. So this is this is my approximation, roughly. Okay. So I'm I'm trying to draw uh, the curve uh, that will that I actually use. I can pre-compute and I can use to approximate things. So, for example, say uh, I, I'll break it. Maybe how 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 far should I go? I probably uh, so this one is go left right somehow, and this one uh, I, I'm not sure how far. That's 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 not crucial, but that that would be roughly my approximation. The approximation of y equals square root of x. So this function is approximated how by 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 this kind of a step function, okay. And then as long as you like I just did above, if I if my x is here, I just go up and and I find the answer. If my x is here, that's how I find the answer. Okay, so it is possible that you could do that in that manner and, and supply this data to the calculator and it will do it automatically except you probably not probably but definitely have more points okay so the calculator has what it does have it doesn't understand square root but it doesn't have a lot of memory probably so with that memory you can have a bunch of points so the, these these points on the graph will be very close to each other and that might be enough okay it might be enough, the, the, the accuracy might be enough. So it will be like a little step function, uh, looking like this. And, uh, and that's, you put it inside of the, uh, either it is a Excel or it is a, uh, your calculator, okay? So uh, this is uh, kind of a, the, the function is constant, so constant approximation is the simplest one. The simplest approximation is a constant, so it is at least within a certain interval, uh, and it remains it remains constant. So uh, remember the hierarchy of functions. From constant function, what's next? That's right. Next after constant is is linear. Okay. So so let's imagine what the same problem would look like if we allow ourselves to approximate with lines, it's their lines, linear lines, but they're not, don't have to be horizontal. Okay, so we're looking at the same uh, picture, pretty much, uh, of, of the square root, uh, which we remains unknown. Okay, but the, I still could have, I still have some, only some data, some a few points, uh, same, same points, say, one and four, Okay, but now I'm going to approximate, you see what, what I'm going to be doing. Instead of horizontal line, what do I draw? I, it, is, it is one one way, yeah, certainly. Uh, uh, a second line is a possibility, maybe. But we choose instead a uh, 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 tangent, right, so like this.
Okay, so compare. If we just can find the tangent line compared to how better we were, the job we're doing with, with this approximation. So that, that green line above and the green line below, look how, how tightly it hugs the, uh, the graph. So even if I take, a, I take a, just, just taking a picture, so I could, well, say this one, uh, the answer is four, and this is where, the, this, is, this is the error right here. This is the error. Uh, if I try to do the same over here, the, the error is almost invisible. So this is for 4.3, whatever. Uh, the error is, is right here, right there. The error is, is tiny. I can't even find it here, this the error. Because the tangent line approximates the, the line, the, the curve, and it does a much better job than the horizontal line. So, I mean, I mean, after all, both of them are lines. We just choose to remove the restriction that the line has got to be uh, absolutely has to be uh, horizontal. So, if we allow ourselves to do this, well, there we go. We we, we are in a better better place. So, uh, so that's that's another plan. That's that's how how you do it. Alternatively, secant lines are still possible. Um, uh, but uh, 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 tangent lines, long-term long uh, tangent lines are better. Uh, what I mentioned yesterday is the, the advantage of, of, of tangent lines in linear approximation. That's, that's what uh, linear is, is that there is a next step, and that's quadratic. Quadratic, cubic, and so on. So it, it will be a long list of a long sequence of, of better and better approximations. Okay, so that, that's why we choose... Uh, Linear tangent over uh, uh, tangent over secant. Okay, so all right, so let's let's do it uh, now uh, uh, algebraically. Uh, uh, what what is the algebra behind it? So we have a uh, we have a uh, 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 square root of uh, let's say the square root of, of the function. So uh, I will literally go on and find a tangent. So. So find the tangent, the tangent line, which is a function, a linear function, uh, of y equals square root of x at x, or let's say a equal to 4. Okay, so one of our anchors. Uh, we've done this a few times, so let, let me quickly carry it out. So f of x is equal to square root of x. f prime of x is equal to 1 over 2 square root of x. So f prime of a, which is f prime of 4, is equal to 1 over 2 times square root of 4, which is uh, 1 fourth. Okay? What is the meaning of this 1 fourth? On this picture, the meaning of a one fourth. Is that the derivative of one? Well, it is the derivative, but the, the, the right word is the slope. Right. So it is a straight line. So certainly it is the derivative too, but it is the slope, the slope of that tangent line. That particular, this one, this particular tangent line is equal to one fourth. It is actually quite believable if you look at the picture. So and then and then that pretty much does it because this is uh, uh, we well let's write out uh, the tangent line I didn't I didn't do that but so this is this is the function so the equation uh, of the tangent line is in the uh, point slope form with slope as we already know is equal to one fourth what is the point look at the picture. What is the point? The x value? You need, you need both. It is a point, so it has two points. Uh, 4, 2, that's right. So this 2. Uh, so 4, 2 uh, is the point. And that's, that's point slope. Okay, so point is 4, 2, and then we're writing the, so the equation is y minus uh, f of, uh, y minus 
uh, 2 is equal to 1 fourth x minus 4. Okay, so that is the equation of the tangent line. But now, this is the crucial step, is not to think about the tangent line as, the, as just a line, the equation of the line, but rather think about it as a function. We have produced a new function. We're replacing the old function with a new function. So uh, a new function, and they say L of x, L stands for linear, will be uh, 2 plus 1 fourth x minus 4. So as you can see, this is, this is the crucial part is here. Uh, as we step away from, uh, from 1 fourth, uh, from 4, how far away we step from 1 fourth is multiplied by 1 fourth and added to the original value of the function. Okay, so this is, this one is the constant approximation we, that we started with. So if, you, you can imagine the, how this constant approximation is still visible in our linear approximation. So, so that linear part with x in it, that's what makes the difference. That's what, that's what makes the, uh, uh, the, the curve, this, the straight line, the tangent line, to approximate the, uh, the so much better than that horizontal line because we added an extra term with x in it and it has a slope. So it was a horizontal slope, a horizontal zero slope, horizontal line, and now we have one fourth slope. And so each time, each we step a little bit off x, uh, say uh, 01, and then we'll see what, uh, uh, what, what it does. Uh, we see where uh, we add uh, one fourth, we multiply by one fourth and add to the original value. Okay, so, uh, so this is, two is, uh, um, well, I, I should have probably written here, f of four is equal to two. Okay, so these are the three values are actually quite visible. Let me circle them. X is four, Y is two, slope is one fourth. And they all reappear here, two, four, and one fourth. Okay, and that is, this is the, the linear approximation. So constant approximation is just two, but now this thing is the, in the technical term is the best linear approximation. Why do we say it's the best? Because you can think of many linear lines that pass through the same point, but one of them has this perfect slope. And the perfect slope is the derivative, the, uh, and that, that's what gives us uh, the tangent line. Okay, so what we have found is this line, uh, the tangent line right there, uh, uh, for 0.42, slope 1 half. And now we can answer our qu the original question, what is the approximately the square root of 4.01? Okay, and, uh, and now, how? Well, we just plug it in. We'll plug it in, right? So, so once again, imagine that the blue curve is unknown. The blue curve is unknown. So we, we cannot really use it. Okay, so, so I, I let me draw this again without the blue curve, but rather what, what we just found. Uh, so this is 4, this is 2, uh, this is a my, my dot, and the uh, roughly the, uh, my tangent line looks like this. This is y equal L of x, right? So there is nothing else. So this is all there is for, for us to use. We, we square root, the, 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 the premise was that we don't know what the graph of the square root looks like. We want to we wanna figure it out. Not figure it out the graph but by itself, but rather just, just to be able to compute the values as much as possible. And if you do, if you can, then you, from those points, you can build the, the graph. Sure, sure, that's, that's, that's what the graphic calculator would do. So computing, computing as many values as possible, and then if they are close enough to each other, uh, you're going to have a very, nice, um, <clears throat> a very nice curve made of dots. Okay, so, uh, so th this is what we do. Is that we, we pick 4.01. The original problem uh, was, was it, or 4.1? Oh, let, let me make 4.1, just slightly reasonable number, 4.1. Okay, uh, slightly easier. Okay, so uh, so then uh, there is a value of 4.1 somewhere here, 4.1, and that's what I do. I just, uh, I uh, uh, graphically, that's what's happening. So <coughs> this is uh, my approximation, which will be larger than 2, but not too far off 2, 
uh, and uh, and not two. So we know that the number is larger, and we're getting larger than 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 two. Okay, so that's good news. And so we plug in, plug in. So I have uh, then L of so square root of four point one is approximately equal L of four point one. The value of the function, which is what what you see there. So uh, we compute, and this is once again you can see that every single thing that we did was computable by hand. Okay, so this we we were able to compute the uh, the derivative, and we were able to plug in values in the derivative. And the the linear function is what's good about it is that it is computed entirely by what addition and multiplication. So there is no, nothing to worry about. So two plus one fourth. 4.1 minus 4. Okay, or 2 is the initial the initial zero level uh, uh, approximation of our function plus 0.25 times 0.1. So what is it? 2.025. Uh, okay. Well, uh, so you see, let's let's check it out what what actual calculators tells us so square where is the square root this is, uh, here it is okay 4.1 4.1 4 square root uh, yeah so to 2 4 what is it 2 uh, 4 8 4 2 4 8 4 it's it's certainly very close so the only difference is uh, uh, wh why the difference so I, I certainly don't know what's inside of this calculator uh, because all we know, you can just have a big chunk of data uh, and nothing but uh, of it. So we'll, we'll how exactly? But then the question still remains, where does that data come from? And it, once again, it would have to come from some computation, maybe of this kind or a similar kind. And uh, uh, there is a discrepancy. Um, it is either they, they compute, uh, uh, pre -com have more pre-computed points, or they approximate uh, quadratically, not just linearly. Okay, so that's the only... Uh, the only difference is okay. So general theory now. So we did we did an example and it works out just fine. Okay. So now uh, the theory. Um, so f prime of let me just. Uh, write out for you the, the definition of the derivative uh, x goes to a uh, there is a point here uh, that's the definition of the derivative so when you ask to compute something uh, from the definition this is how you do it and now uh, so it's uh, the this is the difference quotient okay so uh, you have two values a x and this is then uh, uh, this is the denominator right here, and the numerator is is here. Okay. Uh, so it's the same function computing by a limit. However, the, if we're talking about linear approximation, a uh, linear approximation, <coughs> uh, the linear uh, the linear approximation is defined as a, a, through a certain property, and the uh, it is a certain way to minimize the error between the linear function. And in our function, so this is what it looks like. So once again, we have two values, a and x, but this time we're not looking at the at the function itself, but rather at the function itself and its approximation. So uh, so these are the values, and uh, um, somehow there is a graph somewhere. Maybe we don't know what it is, but this is uh, what we're trying to minimize. Is uh, why why is it the best linear approximation? Because there is a certain property that that we're going to uh, require. So this is my y equal of x. So this is y equal f of x, just as it is here. So this is it. And uh, uh, the, where, where is the error? This is the error. And that is the, what we want to minimize as a limit. So the error is um, uh, l of x minus L of X. L of X minus F of X. Okay, so that's what we want to minimize. This is the definition. So a linear function 
y equal to l of x is the best linear approximation. of y equal f of x at x equal a if. So we do not say what this is, but rather, as we have done a few times, we require a certain property to be satisfied. This is the property. We are trying to minimize our error, l of x minus f of x, over x minus a. That part is the same. That is our, uh, what is it? Is it is a 1. So the denominator is still the run, but this time the numerator is not the rise, which is in the, in the definition of the, uh, uh, of, the, um, of the derivative, but rather uh, the error that goes to A. Okay, and it has to be equal to zero. Okay, so the error between the two functions, the difference between the functions <coughs> which is there, should be it should go to zero proportionally to the uh, the run, okay? So uh, error proportional to the run, uh, the run uh, goes to zero. That's how you would describe it, okay? And then and then the conclusion, however, is in the form of a theorem, and uh, uh, then. Under these conditions, assuming that uh, uh, if f is uh, differentiable at x equal a, then uh, uh, then we have our equation, our l of x. Our, our uh, equation is just the way we did it, the tangent line. So it's f of a plus f prime of a, x minus a. Okay, so uh, this is just the tangent line. So there is nothing new here. This is just the, your your tangent line. Okay, so so the point is that the definition is is uh, uh, it's it's roundabout way kind of uh, that often you know, we take, um, uh, but uh, we we define uh, something through uh, a property rather than through a direct computation. But then there is a way to find it directly, and that's what we uh, discover if we were we were to go through uh, the proof. Then we would discover that the only function that satisfies this property is is our tangent line. Okay. Uh, and that would prove that uh, uh, there is only one uh, best uh, linear approximation. Okay, so um, let me run one more example of 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 uh, linearization. in terms of uh, accuracy and, and taking control of, of uh, possible errors. So this is the problem. Uh, so this is the problem. So we're talking about um, uh, tiles. Uh, they're supposed to be 10 by 10 in feet. Okay. And uh, uh, but we uh, we care about uh, about its area rather than about it about the uh, we we take in about care. So area is supposed to be ten by ten times ten, so it's one hundred. Okay. So we care about uh, somehow to compute how much we can how much area we can cover with the, with this tile, uh, but uh, nobody measures area. You can't really measure area. You can measure length. So what we end up doing is measure its side, which is supposed to produce 10. But you know there's always an error. OK? And then through this, the multiplication, which is over here, so area is equal to x squared. So this is x equal 10 is the side. And then you have a function, uh, y equal i, a equal x squared. So, so the question then becomes: uh, We are we are measuring. We're still measuring the area, but indirectly. We measure the area of the uh, of the of the tile uh, by measuring its side. Is there any any trouble there? Any 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 trouble at all in terms of how uh, we what we can have, what we can uh, what can happen? 
Um, well, this is roughly how it works out. Uh, we, we should be able to work backwards. So uh, we, the approximation is easy, and uh, it is kind of a constant, uh, constant approximation. Um, and then you just say as long as the, the size is 10 or close to 10, then the, uh, the uh, uh, so say, say x is close to 10, then we say uh, a is, is, is 100. Okay, that is the constant approximation which we, we just did. Which is certainly is, is very uh, uh, kind of a uh, simplistic. So uh, so what we do instead, uh, uh, we uh, we have to work backwards, and uh, uh, it is frequently the case uh, is uh, so we're going to do linear approximation, but moreover we we want to try to uh, take control of error. So you might be asked to uh, to to guarantee that the error of your area is no more than some number. So. So how do we guarantee, as it might be required by, by the job description, uh, how do we guarantee that the, uh, the error of the area is less than, say, point, say point 0.5, uh, point 0.5, is less than 5, 5 feet, feet, square feet. Right. Okay, so it's, it's a reasonable requirement. Uh, so approximations are allowed, but you got to know where the truth lies. And so I, I need the accuracy to be within, within five square feet. And, and as you can see, the, the, the trouble is your, your, um, your, your measuring, your, your tape, measuring tape. It has an error of error, and you can find out what the error of the tape is, but it doesn't tell you what the error of the square of that is. You see the problem? Is it that square? That, uh, well, that, that, that's a good question. Do you just square? So suppose the tape gives you the accuracy of plus or minus one foot. Well, this is very inaccurate, but suppose. Uh, I, I actually, I was, well, probably I was talking about inches. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> For some, uh, these, are, these are probably inches, uh, not, not feet. Uh, I think that would make sense if, if this, the tile is a uh, uh, 10 inches. So, so, so as I said, so suppose uh, the error is say uh, I actually have. What do I have here? Well, well, let's start with one. Suppose, suppose the error. The error of the measurement is two inches of the measurement of length. So in other words, that's the accuracy of your tape. I mean, very inaccurate, but let, let's keep it simple. So suppose it's two inches error. So then what is the error? What is the error of the, um, of the area? Is it four? I don't think so. No. Uh, so do you see why not? Well, suppose uh, suppose two inches is the tolerance on either width or depth. This can go all the way to twelve. So this is two. So altogether it's twelve, and this also can go all the way to twelve. Right. So it is quite possible when the result is ten, you measure it, and the answer is ten. So 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 measure, and the answer is ten inches. What does it tell you about the area? So the measure of, of length or of the side is is ten inches. So this is it. This is what you have measured. Uh, but you know that behind it it could be actually twelve. Okay, so do you see so the, the difference of the twelve squared minus that's right. It will be 12 squared minus 10 squared, which is 144 minus 100, which is actually 44, which is a humongous number, right? So, so the error is two, uh, but it's really not. 
uh, it doesn't it give you that doesn't really tell the whole story. Uh, so okay, so let, let's figure out then what the what the accuracy of the tape we would need in order to guarantee that the accuracy of our area is uh, less than five inches. So right now our area is 44. Okay, so how do we guarantee five square inches? So square inches. So this is the, we, we, we got to change here so some number. This is the number that we're looking for, and traditionally it's called a delta. Okay? So, so suppose delta is the error of measurement. We, we, and we want to figure out what delta should be, okay? So, uh, so then uh, uh, the reading is of our measurement is 10 plus or minus delta. So it was 10 plus or minus 2, which gave us between 8 and 12. That certainly is bad. Uh, what is delta? Uh, what kind of value of delta would guarantee us that the five, we, we have a 5-inch uh, uh, accuracy for the area? So what do we do? Well, yeah, yes, we, we, yeah, but we pretty much plug, do what we just did. We plug in the, uh, the 10, say, plus delta squared minus 10 squared, right? So that is the error, and they let me use the, uh, the, there is some delta x. So there is some notation, and then this will be delta a. So delta stands for difference, and the difference in x, the input variable, versus the difference of the of a, which is the output variable. Okay. So uh, so in other words, these are actually these these two numbers are the numerator and denominator of of what. Of the difference quotient, and the, and and if you take the limit, it should be the derivative. Of the, of the of the function x squared, so uh, okay, so uh, let's see what what happens. So, uh, one hundred plus two delta. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, twenty delta plus delta squared minus ten squared. Well, one hundred. So I am getting delta squared plus twenty delta. Okay, and then and then we are working. This is supposed to. That's that's the requirement. Uh, is that this is supposed to be less than five. Okay, and uh, what do we do? We just solve this problem in the, uh, well, you know, we, we solve the, the, this is to be solved. Solve it and find the, small, find the largest possible delta that would, be, uh, that would be satisfied. So the largest delta is, is the one that satisfies what? The one. What does it satisfy? The, the equation, not the inequality. Okay, so so it will be delta squared plus 20 delta minus 5 equal to 0. And then, uh, well, quadratic formula, uh, it will be negative 20 plus uh, 400 minus, uh, what is it, 20, right? over 2. So it will be negative uh, uh, 20 plus or minus square root of 380. Am I right? So I didn't, I didn't make any mistakes here by any chance. There is no plus or minus actually. There is only, pl uh, only plus. Is this correct? 5 times 4, 20, 400. Okay. Same seems okay to me. So, okay. So uh, I'll let me just do the calculator. So it will be square root of 380, square root minus 20, and divided by 2. What happened? Push the wrong button. Okay, let's start over. And where's that thing? Here it is. Okay, 380, square root, uh, plus, uh, minus 20, minus 20 divided by 2, divided by 2. 
Okay, so uh, 0.25, roughly. So, um, so that's the how, the, uh, the how accurate quarter inch accuracy you need for, for your tape to ensure that the, the tile will not be off more than by five, uh, five inches. So it will be plus or minus 100 feet, 100 uh, square inches. Uh, and, but for that, you need to measurements to be uh, within 0.25. So as you can see, it's, it's pretty much the same as, as what we have been doing. Uh, and uh, uh, the number could have been, uh, well, let's see, uh, it, it is entirely, uh, the, 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 so that I noticed that this was just pure common sense. I didn't do any calculus, did I? Right, this was pure common sense. Uh, somebody with... Uh, uh, just uh, doing that for uh, professionally, it would carry out this computation fairly, uh, fairly easily, and it, it, like I said, doesn't require any calculus. It is where where calculus is. Where why is it? Where is 2.5, 0.25 rather, uh, comes from if it is uh, would uh, done um, uh, if you do um, uh, calculus. And the the answer is simple. We look at delta a over delta x. Okay, so and, and take its limit. We have delta x going to zero. So remember that's that's the, just the different notation for for my uh, difference quotient for uh, my my derivative. And uh, uh, so it will be the function is a is equal to x squared. So a, 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 and this is it to be evaluated then. It, so it will be what evaluated at at one at, at ten. So it will be lim delta x goes to zero. And here I have 10 squared minus, uh, or rather, uh, 10 uh, plus 10 plus delta x squared. Something we just carried out, but let's let's do it now uh, um, as if we know calculus divided by delta x. Okay, so that's pretty much the same thing as we have done. Uh, just notation slightly changes, and. Uh, um, uh, and, and then I don't want to carry out the limit as we did. We already did the, the limit. Uh, this this is where we did the not the limit, or rather the simplification of the difference quotient. So so compute the limit if you like. That's that's the way we used to compare compute derivatives, uh, or or how else do we compute derivatives? I mean this is the derivative. This is equal to uh, what is the derivative of x squared at x equal 10. Right, so we don't really need uh, to go through the limits anymore, nor do this ad hoc computations. We have a tool of a calculus that allows us to compute the, uh, the derivative of any, any function any time we want. So it's 2x, and x is equal to 10. Okay, so, well, so it's 20. The derivative is equal to 20, and uh, so we have uh, delta A over delta x is approximately, or, well, approximately equal to, to 20. And so if, if delta A is... Five. If delta is five, then um, then delta x is uh, what is it? Tw uh, five over twenty, or point two five. Okay. So uh, so as you can see, behind this common sense analysis of errors, plus or minus, uh, can 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 uh, can happen uh, with uh, any kind of. Uh, uh, experimental in any experimental science. Uh, behind it is, is calculus, and uh, uh, which which is serves as a pretty much a shortcut, so that you don't have to do go through these computations every time, and depending on the function. Uh, as long as the function is uh, reasonable, you just instead of you differentiate it, and you know that the uh, the proportion of the error of the input versus output, which is what what this is, the proportion of the error of the input uh, over of the out, or the error of the output over the input is approximately equal to the value of the derivative at that point. Okay, so that, that's what we did here. And uh, um, so let, let me so let me put this in words. So the uh, output error, input error is approximately equal to the derivative at that point. 
Okay, so it depends on the measurements. That's the tricky part about the errors uh, when the functions are more complicated than just linear functions that depending on your measurement or what your actual measurement is, the error will be different. Not the error produces different error. It is the same error of your uh, strip of your measurement of the length will produce different uh, error of the uh, of the area if say imagine that your 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 tile was five by five not ten by ten then the error would, would have been different uh, by quite a lot because the derivative would have been if I put five here it would, would have been uh, ten right so uh, then the uh, uh, then the uh, we would have to uh, we didn't need as accurate uh, measurement of the side to satisfy this requirement it would be uh, it would be instead of uh, 5 over 20 it would be 5 over 10 so it's 0.5 so it's so much easier if if the uh, error is diff if the measurement is is different so wherever it's centered the center of uh, of our approximation either we assume that the tile is 10 by 10 or we assume it's 5 by 5 by 5 it matters just like our uh, linearizations they are they are different in different uh, in different locations like here see uh, in different different locations, you sort of skip to the next one whenever there is a uh, you're closer to the uh, next anchor point. So uh, if I was over here, I would be I would know how I would measure uh, how I evaluate the square root. I would uh, I would uh, go around. Uh, I will stick to x x equal one and the the first change line rather than the second. Okay, so uh, so that's how uh, pro approximations work. Uh, there is certainly more to it, and uh, what this uh, analysis that precedes the differentiation ind also indicates that there is there is uh, in indicates slightly that there is more of it uh, here, and what's more of it is is actually uh, uh, providing the interval of confidence, not just the approximation, which is one single number, but sometimes in a more uh, mission mission critical uh, applications. Then just you know calculator, uh, you you gotta you have to guarantee that you are within a certain uh, um, uh, w within a certain distance from the dis from the number that you're getting. So you don't know what the actual number is. You have an approximation, but you want to know that you are here. So the truth is somewhere within that interval. So the approximation is never a single number. It is it is always an interval. And uh, and that's that 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 analysis over here indicated that how we, you would go about getting it, uh, and there is there is a calculus theory uh, to uh, to um, uh, to follow, uh, but we will just probably we won't have time for that uh, as much as necessary as as it takes. Uh, you can every uh, every uh, estimate comes with uh, with the error estimate. Okay, so so suppose the answer that you supply this is your approximation. And then you tell that uh, within this interval, the truth lies here, okay? And uh, that, that's pretty much what we did with this example. Um, uh, for the general, uh, how good a linear approximation is, uh, that requires extra, extra work, and it actually relies on, of all things, on the second derivative. Okay, so, yeah, we'll just, we just don't really have enough time for that, so we'll skip that. Use what? Trig. Well, why do you want trig? Why do you want to use trig like here? You just know the, the square, the diagonals, like will connect. How does it doesn't really help you? The the, the diagonal the um, how should I put it? The uh, there usually there is if you try to get around an obstacle in mathematics, it's probably just running into another obstacle, which is after thinking you realize it's the same obstacle. There, there, there is no uh, kind of sneaky ways to get around difficulties. If it is a conceptual difficulty such as this, then um, the, you, you're going to be facing the same thing, only maybe in a more complex environment, such as uh, if you, you try to uh, deal with, with, with trigonometry here. Uh, no, it's, it's pretty much uh, what it is, as, as simple as it gets. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
Okay, so uh, what, uh, what are we going to talk about? Uh, okay, I think I uh, I, I run off out of out of things to to speak in this uh, about this topic, and then we are about to to proceed to the next uh, uh, big topic, and that is uh, uh, that is integration. And uh, uh, the integration uh, uh, is a good idea to start with with numerics, and uh, we already have uh, have seen a bit of that. Uh, but uh, uh, it is it is uh, uh, the question of uh, if you remember the question of uh, a broken <coughs> odometer, the uh, situation of broken odometer, speedometer works, and you want to know how far you went. Okay. So, uh, so use the speedometer to find how far you are. You are as 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 a function, not just one number necessarily, but a whole whole bunch of bunch of values. So the answer you might remember. So say if uh, the speed is equal to uh, say you had uh, 60, 70, and 80. Okay, three hours. So th this is the speed. Then, uh, uh, then how do we compute the location? So you, you will be uh, one hour, one hour. So you start with zero. Then you are at uh, uh, well, well, let's say one half hour. So the first half hour you drove 60 miles. Then you drove 70 miles an hour, uh, miles an hour over here. Okay, so what do you do? You start at zero. Then after half an hour you are at 60. Uh, uh, times one half, okay, and then 60 plus one half, you add uh, 70 times one half, and then you add 80 times one half, okay. So once again, three uh, recorded speeds, and uh, over each of the uh, half hour at a time, okay, and then you will know uh, approximate error. So this sum is the approximate distance, whatever whatever the distance is. But the, uh, what I want to uh, uh, do now is a new interpretation of, of this familiar analysis. So new interpretation is uh, the area. What area? Well, we just, if we just plot these, uh, uh, these numbers, uh, say like this, uh, so 1, 2. OK, so I was at 60. And then I was at 70, and I w then I was at 80. Okay, the assumption was that it is, was constant. So uh, then, what we have found then the approximate distance is this area. So the approximate distance uh, is understood as the area, as well as the area can be understood as the approximate distance uh, moved with. Uh, uh, along these, uh, uh, under these conditions. So uh, the area, look at it, it is, it is uh, three numbers, they simply uh, give you the areas of these rectangles, three rectangles. Um, so, so where does it take us? The point is uh, what this is a starting point to, in order to be able to compute areas that are uh, under curves, that are uh, curved areas such as this. So I might, might be required to find, for example, what is the area of a circle. What's the area of a circle? It's a trick question. Uh, no, that's the length. Uh, pi r squared, yes. Uh, the point is, that how do we know? How do we know? It is, it is curved. You cannot measure it like those rectangles. You can measure or tiles, measure two sides and multiply, and you have the area, right? If it is curved, how do you do it? Uh, you take the, you got to find the anti-drift, the three points. Well, zero. well, that's not, the, the Greeks didn't know it. They didn't know any calculus, but uh, uh, they, they were able to f compute the, uh, uh, the area of a circle as well as the uh, number pi to uh, many, many decimals. And the, the answer is approximation. Did they just roll the circle? 
No, no, uh, no. They did it theoretically. It's, it, <laughs> I, I don't actually don't know uh, who. It was not Greeks who actually for the first time discovered that uh, the, the formula. Okay, they they were the ones who sort of. Uh, I don't think they did. They prove it. Yeah, I think they proved it actually. So uh, prove prove that this formula uh, with the uh, with what amounts to limits, and the limit is uh, limit of uh, you would have, they they did they approximated it from the uh, inside out. So you start with a, squ a square inside and compute its area. Uh, then you put a pentagon inside and compute its area. So as long as they have straight edges, computing the area is not difficult. So the next one is hexagon. And once again, you can compute its area is if you just, uh, uh, if you know how. And then uh, at the end, you certainly have to keep going and then you have n-gon. Uh, a regular polygon with n sides, and then uh, there's a formula that gives you the answer to what the area is, and then it will be dependent on n. You pretty much end up with a sequence, so sequence of areas. So a1, a2, well, well let's a4, a5, a6, with uh, the index, the, the super subscript indicating the number of sides, uh, in the in the polygon, and then uh, and then take its limit. Okay, so that was way before Newton and any calculus, and they did it, uh, and they they uh, came up with the uh, with the answer, and they, they they did it. They were actually very careful, even better than that. They they were not satisfied with this analysis because they thought, what if the, those those polygons are growing in size? But what if something is still left? So they're growing, 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 right? It seems that they're filling the circle eventually. But what if there's a chance that there's some, some slivers left there? So what do you think they did? Same from the outside. OK, so square on the outside, pentagon on the outside, right? And then, and then you have a new C in hexagon. Okay, and then you have a new sequence, say B4, B5, B6. So if the first sequence was increasing, right, they're bigger, 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 this one is decreasing. Would they uh, subtract it? Would they subtract it? Yeah, you, know, you could, you could. The point being that these two sequences have to have a limit, <coughs> and, and what else? Limit AN, limit BN. They both have to exist, firstly and secondly. For, for this thing to make sense, they have to be equal to each other. So that proves that there is, there is no sliver of, of area left. So even though you realize that the circle itself, the circle itself will not be, uh, will not never be removed from, it will always lie between the, those two polygons. The big polygon will always contain uh, the circle itself, and the one on the, on the inside never, uh, always, it's always on the outside, right? So that circle, what, ha what happens to the circle? It never goes away. So that, that was the suspicion. Maybe that circle has some, some area in it, okay? So they, by doing this, they also prove that the area of the circle, not the disk, but the circle, is zero. Okay, so that was also a profound uh, result, I think. Okay, so uh, so we'll we'll and then then now uh, uh, Newton came and then he did showed how to do the same thing with uh, with any kind of uh, curved shape, almost any. Okay, so that's what we're going to be going to be doing. Okay.